Good afternoon and welcome to this Tuesday, January 8th edition of Westman Newsline, our first show of the new year. I'm Dylan Donald alongside Christopher Nicholson and Randy Joseph Lilly. In today's news, a branded man has been sentenced to house arrest after sending threatening texts. And one city councillor is calling for a review of the Winter Festival Operating Committee. And Chris will be in with Sports Chris. The Wheat Kings hit the ice tonight looking to find cheer in the new year. Oh, that's right, Dylan. Wheats look to avenge a loss to the hitman from last week when they host Calgary tonight at Westman Plains and look to end a bad streak. I'll have all those details and more later in sports. Thanks, Chris. And Randy will be in with weather. Randy, the last time we talked, it was beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Almost four weeks, almost four weeks later, it still does. What gives? Blame our producer, Colton Yarge. He wanted his Ukrainian Christmas yesterday so badly that he begged Jack Frost to stick around. Currently in Brandon, it is minus two. Winds are out of the southwest at 19 kilometers per hour, and the probability of precipitation is 100%, so it's snowing. I'll be back with all your weather details later on in the show. One Brandon man has learned that sending threatening texts is no joke. Judge Shauna Hewitt-Mitka said, said an example needed to be made of 23-year-old Eric Alexander McIsaac, who sent his ex-girlfriend anonymous text, is, text messages back in May threatening to rape her. One particularly disturbing message said, I am definitely going to rape you. The woman said in a victim impact statement that during the three weeks the texts were sent, she had friends stay with her and always felt someone was watching her. I've never been so paranoid and scared like that before in my whole life, she wrote. McIsaac claimed the messages were intended as a joke and can't explain why he sent the texts. Hewitt Mikta sentenced McIsaac to four months of house arrest, followed by two years of probation. Councillor Jan Shiboye is asking the city's senior administration to perform a thorough review of the management and governance of the Lieutenant Governor's Winter Festival. The Green Acres councillor said news updates that the American Pavilion is being excluded from the 10th Annual Festival have caused public concern. The American Pavilion's application was declined after a vote by the Festival Committee, which operates and manages the festival. Mayor Sherry Dector Hurst said the city has no business telling the committee how to run the event, since the city does not organize it in any way. Almost 5,000 visitors attended the American Pavilion just last year. The testimony of a social worker who handled Phoenix Sinclair's case has called into question at the inquiry looking into the five-year-old girl's death. Dolores Chief Abby Gosis testified earlier during the inquiry that she was a busy person in part because she was juggling her job, attending university full-time, and commuting 82 kilometers daily from the Broken Head First Nation. But on Monday, her university transcript was entered as evidence. It showed that by the time she was handling Phoenix's case, she had actually voluntarily withdrawn from her university classes. Phoenix was murdered in 2005 by her mother and stepfather, who, who abused a child, beat her, and buried her near a dump. Her death went undetected for nine months, during which time her mother continued to collect welfare benefits in her name. The Manitoba government and the Heart and Stroke Foundation are giving 1,000 emergency defibrillators to the community clubs and other nonprofit organizations. Under the province's Defibrillator Public Access Act, all sports complexes and other public places must be equipped with automated external defibrillators by January 2014. So to help get more nonprofit community groups on board, the province and the foundation are handing out 1,000 of the devices free of charge. The province is subsidizing the cost of the 1,000 AEDs, while the foundation is distributing the devices to the eligible groups. And with that, let's hope no defibrillation is necessary as we take a look at where today's money markets are currently sitting. Westman Newsline, produced by the IMA Media Production students of Assiniboine Community College. Local news, weather, and sports on Brandon's only TV newscast, Westman Newsline, airing at 1 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on WCG-TV. Turning to international news now, Egypt's president says he supports those who are trying to oust Bashar al-Assad. Mohamed Morsi says the Assyrian people have earned the right to decide their own future. CNN's Wolf Blitzer was granted an exclusive interview with President Morsi. We're getting immediate reaction to the uh, latest speech from the uh, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad uh, from the highest levels 
of the Egyptian government. We're here at the presidential palace in Cairo, and I just sat down for a lengthy interview with the Egyptian president, Mohamed Morsi. He has no love lost for the uh, Syrian president, Bashar al-Assad. He wants Bashar al-Assad to go and go right away. Listen to this exchange that I had with President Morsi. So you want Bashar al-Assad to leave, to give up power. One, one, one I guess, uh, amendment to that. Do you believe he should be tried by the International Criminal Court for war crimes? It is not I who want this, but the Syrian people who want this. This phase is the phase of the people. Similar to what the Egyptian people wanted, the Syrian people want it. And we support the Syrian people. And they're going to win. And they have the will to win. So you say the Syrian people want Bashar al-Assad to be tried for war crimes? The Syrian people, through their revolution and through the movement, will, when the bloodshed stops, move to a new stage where they will have an independent parliament and a government of their choosing. And then they will decide what they want to do against those who committed crimes against them. It is the Syrian people who decide. It's clear that uh, President Morsi uh, feels that uh, time is running out for the Syrian leader, that the Syrian leader can either do it the easy way or the hard way, but he wants him gone. He wants him gone right away. He, th he says that's what the Syrian people want, the Syrian people deserve, uh, and he wants to uh, make sure that that happens. Wolf Blitzer, CNN, Cairo. The Muslim Brotherhood has strengthened its position in the Egyptian government following the latest government reshuffle. Eight of the 35 ministers now come from the Islamist group. The oppos opposition says the move will increase political tensions. One sure sign of that tension is a rise in gun violence. CNN's Ian Lee in Cairo has more details. Gunfire outside the presidential palace in Cairo last December. A fight between opponents and supporters of President Mohamed Morsi. Business owner Saeed Ali witnessed the chaos unfold. Reports from that night say both sides were shooting at each other. I saw lots of people from the protest side uh, down, lots of injuries. I saw with my own eyes uh, more than six uh, passed away. Since the revolution two years ago, Ali is increasingly concerned about the security situation. I have, uh, I have this gun. This is the, the, the one I use. This is mine on, on my license. And I have uh, the shotgun as well. It's on my license. He's not the only one. Egypt is awash in guns, and Egyptian security officials say serious gun crime is on the rise. People are um, eagerly, they want to buy guns uh, due to the political instability that the, go that the country is having right now. Brothers Khaled and Ahmed El Baroudi are among the few licensed gun dealers in Egypt. They deal in pistols and shotguns, and they're not cheap. These firearms range from five to $30,000. A single bullet is about $5. It's hard to own a gun legally in Egypt. You need a clean criminal record, extensive background checks, and a valid reason. And even then, you might be denied a permit. Out of 10,000 applicants last month, roughly 1,000 were approved. The bad thing here is that some people who are unable to get a license can seek the black market, for example, just for protection. Criminals are also taking advantage of cheaper illegal guns. In addition, Egypt's revolution created a security vacuum, with some policemen still reluctant to go back to work. The conflict in Libya flooded Egypt with weapons ranging from Kalashnikovs to RPGs. Homemade guns are also on the rise. For those who want to obey the law and can't get a license, there are alternatives. This is the most popular gun in Egypt, and while it looks real and sounds real, it's not. It's a sound gun. And because you don't need a permit to own one of these things, they're flying off the shelves. For those who can own a gun, like Ali, he hopes the day never comes when he has to draw it. If you're going to shoot, shoot with, 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 with the, the, this, this gun, you know, a bullet in, in somebody, and that's it, he, he's, he's dead. I definitely, I'd rather use this at the first. If, if, I'm, if I'm in need for this, I'm going to use this. Egyptian officials continue to work to secure the country and curb illegal firearms. But some Egyptians okay. believe the only real security uh, is, the, is the one on your hip. On Ian Lee, CNN, Cairo. That's it for news, but stay tuned. Randy's up next with Newsline Weather.
Good afternoon with Newsline Weather. I'm Randy Joseph Lilly. Well, it's been a while since we've done a show, but sadly the weather is almost as cold as it was back in December. I figured the Mayans' prediction would warm the earth a little, but no dice. Currently in Brandon, it is minus 2 and with light snow. Wind is out of the southwest at 19 kilometers per hour. The sky will be cloudy most of the evening with the occasional clear break, and we should drop to minus 4 with winds coming out of the west at 35 kilometers per hour. You don't need to stay awake to see anything interesting in the sky tonight unless you've never seen a few clouds before. Although if you haven't, you'll be in for a surprise overnight. Minus 10 and winds will be out of the west at 30 kilometers per hour. Moving to the radar image now, you'll see a lot of precipitation in southwest Manitoba. We received the snow this morning and it should clear soon. Portage La Prairie in Winnipeg, beware, it's coming your way. Switching to our satellite image now, uh, you can look at that cloud cover. Early this week, we'll be seeing heavy cloud and then nothing for the rest of the week. Moving to our five day forecast, I'll disappear for a few moments and let you look at our shiny weather board. What you will not see is the effect of the wind chill later in the week. Friday, it will feel like minus 26, Saturday, minus 28, and Sunday, minus 26. Now let's take a look around the region. Winnipeg's in at minus four, Portage and Nipah are in at minus six, Dauphin's in at minus one, Minidosa and Killarney at minus two, and Verdon literally rounds us out at zero. Seasonal norms for this time of year are a high of minus 13 and a low of minus 23. The record high was set 11 years ago in 2002 when we were 4.8 degrees above zero. The record low was scary. In 1993 when the low reached minus 38.1. Suddenly today doesn't look so bad. Speaking of today, it is currently minus two and lightly snowing in Brandon. Wind is out of the southwest at 19 kilometers per hour. That's it for weather, but stick around. Chris is up next with Newsline Sports. Good afternoon with Newsline Sports, I'm Christopher Nicholson. The Brandon Wheat Kings will be back in action tonight when they host the Calgary Hitmen at Westman Place. The Wheats enter tonight's contest having lost four games straight and five out of their last six games to kick off the second half of the season. These two teams have met last Wednesday in Calgary when the Hitmen demolished the Wheaties 10-2. The Hitmen are 27, 10, and 4 and sit one point back of their provincial rival Edmonton Oiler Kings for the first place in the Central Division. Brandon, which is 14, 24, and 4 on the year, sit eight points back of the eighth and final playoff spot. Game time tonight is 7 o'clock. There will be no definitive timeline regarding the start of the NHL season, but the lockout is over. Training camps are expected to begin sometime this weekend pending approval of tentative collective bargaining agreements. The expectation is teams will play a 48-game season one once the puck, the puck drops off. There will be hockey this month, but the start date has yet to be finalized, although there's speculation the season could start on the 19th of January. Crews are already rushing to put the ice back in the MTS Center as the Winnipeg Jets scramble to get ready for the abbreviated 2013 NHL season. The rink work began just hours after the league and the Players Association announced a tentative deal to get the game back on the ice. Jets spokesman Scott Brown says the club is contacting season ticket holders in the next few days to reassure them that more information will be released as soon as the league's new schedule comes out. There is no word yet if the Jets will offer discounts or incentives to their fans for the four-month lockout. And Dylan, that's all for sports. Thanks, Chris. That's all the time we have for you today, but stay tuned tomorrow for Brandon's only TV newscast, Westman Newsline.